Art History Lectures presents Raining Cats and Dogs, comparing artworks of dogs and cats in 19th and early 20th century. This class is based upon my class, Art Lover's Guide to Art History, a two-hour specialty class. This is a more compact version where I've included cats and shortened it down to include only the 19th and early 20th century. One of the most famous cats in art history is in Edward Manet's portrait, Olympia. The cat is actually in the very base of the painting and is often not seen because the black color of the cat and the dark background often mask the cat. The painting is of a reclining prostitute, an African maid, and of course the black cat. This was all shocking to 19th century salon visitors who were confronted with this large scale painting of what most men feared, which was a rampant epidemic of syphilis that was coursing through Paris at the period of time. This painting of Olympia was actually painted in 1863, but shown in a Paris salon of 1865. The Salon was a juried exhibition of artist paintings. It was really the only place where artists could show their paintings to the public, and the Parisian public almost always went to the Paris Salon. It was held annually and sometimes biannually. The painting was so shocking because it shows a prostitute. It shows a black African maid and it shows a black cat. This was something that was unaccustomed in the salon paintings. It also featured a different painting style where the application of paint was much flatter, much broader and less modeled. Also, Victorine Marant, who was the model for the painting, is staring straight out at the viewer, confronting the viewer. Here's a close-up of the black cat. The painting was based on several things. It was based on Baudelaire's poem, Les Fleurs de Mal. Uh, there's a feature poem in that booklet that talks about the eroticism of black cats. And that's the thing. The black cat in Manet's painting represents darkness or it represents evil, danger. It has echoes of witches' cats and black magic. This painting, Titian's Venus Darbino, is definitely the influence for Manet's Olympia. Once again, we have a reclining nude, but there are some big differences. The little dog in Titian's painting, which represents loyalty, fidelity, and domesticity, has been replaced by the cat. The pose of the woman is similar, however, she has sort of a coy look on her face, giving us a sidelong glance instead of that direct view that Olympia is giving us. Her maids are, are definitely in the background, more so than Olympia, where the black maid with the flowers is more in the foreground. So. It was based upon Titian, but definitely with a different twist that the Parisian public were horrified by. And this is a close-up of that dog. So dogs and cats both present in these famous paintings, but oppositional forces really. The dog in this painting is very much the opposite of a cat in the Olympia painting. Now, Edward Manet did also paint cats that were more domestic and less dangerous, and this small cat in a portrait of a woman with her cat shows that. So this becomes a representation of domesticity instead of the cat that portrays evil or uncomfortableness or black magic. This cat is more like Titian's dog, so the cat can have dual meanings. Now, Bob the dog from 1876 is also painted by Edward Manet. In this period of time, uh, 
dogs and cats became more important in the everyday lives of Parisians. Because of middle class leisure and prosperity, uh, most families had these animals, which was very different from the past where it was royalty and nobility that owned these animals because they were the ones who could afford to take care of them. Now we're seeing in the Industrial Revolution where the middle class and the rise of the middle class, we're seeing that a lot of people have animals as pets. So what Manet did for his friends and his inner circle and his relatives is he would often do portraits of their dogs for them as gifts. And this is a representation of one of those paintings in Bob. Of course, Manet also showed dogs in some of his bigger portraits as well, or bigger paintings. This one's the Railway from 1876. And we see the model Victorine Moral once again. But in this painting, she's shown more of a middle class, perhaps a nanny or a mother, and she's holding a small puppy in her arms. And here is the picture of the puppy. Berthe Morisot was a member of the Impressionist painter. She painted with them. She was actually the sister-in-law of Edward Manet. Edward Manet was considered the father of Impressionism. However, he never considered himself an Impressionist. He considered himself a realist, and he never exhibited with the Impressionists. The Impressionists had started their own exhibition uh, because the Salon often rejected their paintings. Berthe Morisot, definitely Impressionist, and she also exhibited with them. This is her painting, Young Girl with the Cat and Girl with the Dog. So both domestic paintings, portraits of young women with their animals. Dogs and cats are shown in both her paintings. In many of her paintings, we have images of dogs and cats with their sitter. Now, the difference between uh, Bertha Morisot and other Impressionist painters, the male Impressionist painters, is that Bertha Morisot, as an upper-class woman, wouldn't have access to the same places that artists like Degas, Monet, Renoir, and Manet would have access to. They would be able to go to bars, cabarets, uh, go out in public at night, Whereas both Morisot and Mary Cassatt, who was another Impressionist female artist, were had to work in the domestic sphere. They had to paint in the domestic sphere. So they often painted portraits of their friends and family. They painted social activities that women were involved with. And they also painted a lot of mothers and babies. These are another couple of paintings by, by Berthe Morisot. There's a young girl with a cat. One, one girl has a cat in her arms and one has a cat by her feet. And then there is girl with a dog, which is Julie, who is Berthe Morisot's daughter and her greyhound. This painting is really interesting because Berthe Morisot, obviously Impressionists, used those short brush strokes, the hazy kind of details, uh, the soft colors. A girl with a dog, it's almost unfinished in the background, and the focus is really on Julie and her face and her body position. So this is, again, Mary Cassata. She was an American artist, but she lived in Paris and exhibited with the Impressionists. She was a good friend of Edgar Degas. This is Sarah holding a cat from 1908 and Sarah with her dog from 1901. These are, uh, Sarah was Mary Cassatt's niece. In the one where she's holding the cat, you can see she's very focused on the cat. Whereas the one where she's with her dog, she's looking out at the portrait or looking out from the portrait off to the side instead of looking at her dog. Of course, because of the title, Sarah holding a cat, this probably is not her cat, not an animal that she's used to. So she's probably a little bit more, more curious about this cat than she was is with her own dog on the right hand side. 
Pierre Gaston Noir, another impressionist, was very, very much in love with his cats. Um, we see the woman with the cat uh, in 1875 on the left-hand side, and a sketch girl with a dog from 1872. He has a few portraits of women with their dogs or girls with the dogs, but mostly it's cats. He's very uh, interested in, in cats, uh, especially their erotic symbolism that we talked about a little bit before in Manet's Olympia painting. Not the dangerous qualities, but more the erotic qualities. This is a portrait of Julie uh, Manet. So this is Bertha Morisot's daughter. It was commissioned by uh, herself and her husband to paint their daughter. And you can see that Julie doesn't look quite as happy as the cat that's in her arms in this portrait painting by Renoir. This is a King Charles Cavalier Spaniel, I believe. And this is one of Renoir's paintings of uh, just the small painting of a dog, and this is one of a cat. So he often did individual paintings that where the cat and the dog were the focus. Now Claude Monet. Claude Monet rarely shows animals in his paintings. This one, Cat Sleeping on the Bat, is only one of the only images of cats I could find in his oeuvre. Uh, and he has a few dogs in some of his paintings, but not many, not the same as the other artists that we've seen so far. So this is La Mer Paul from 1882, and she's got a small dog in the foreground. And there is a sketch of that same dog as well, head of a dog from 1882. So obviously this was a sketch that he did uh, to as a preliminary drawing or a preliminary sketch for the previous portrait that we just saw. So you can see the cat and the dog. So he's used these as representations of domesticity. Now Theophile Stylin was really well known for his Art Nouveau posters. This one in particular, the Tournée du Chat Noir, uh, was a very popular piece. It's a popular piece that people often recognize today. It's often used uh, in tourist attractions in Paris as, as posters and postcards. But this was actually an advertisement for one of the first modern cabarets. It was part artist salon and part music hall. And this was a place where artists often gathered to drink and take in the nightlife that was going on at this time. But he also did portraits or posters for things like veterinary clinics. And so this is the Clinique show. We used to see there's the dogs in the foreground and the cats in the background. So he did a lot of images of animals in his posters. And this is just a sketch that he did of a cat. Now, Franz Marc was a German expressionist. He uh, was in, involved in the Cubist movement in Germany. He was also involved with Kandinsky and his Blue Rider group. He uses animals almost exclusively in his paintings. He believed that animals were far more interesting and far more sympathetic characters than humans were. He also has a bit of a color th theory where yellow represented the happy feminine qualities, whereas blue represented a male quality, and red could either be violence or it could be the earth and matter. But this is his white cat from 1912. Uh, lying on this yellow pillow, and then it, the sleeping dog from 1909, one of his more well-known paintings. He often is known for his horses, but he did many different animals. This, you can start to see the cubist influences in the sleeping dog with the angular planes that he started to use. Unfortunately, Franz Marc was in World War I in the front lines, and in 1915, his life ended there. Uh, this is our post-impressionist, Paul Gauguin. So in, these are two Tahitian 
fiction paintings of Paul Gauguin. So Paul Gauguin traveled to Tahiti a couple of times. He was trying to find a pr more primitive, simple life. Uh, he took a 13-year-old vahin or, or a child bride at the time, uh, and he traveled to the interior of Tahiti because in the ports it was already being colonized by the French. And of course, this could be part fantasy on his part as well. So on the left hand, we have man, woman, and cat. So we see two Tahitian uh, people with a cat in the foreground. And in the one on the right, it's called Red Dog from 1892. He often does these paintings of Tahitian women with this red dog that's sort of wandering around and most people believe that the red dog is actually uh, a representation of Gauguin himself. Now Van Gogh didn't do very many animal paintings. He did actually none that I can recall of paintings of animals, but he did do a few sketches. So this is just a, a preliminary sketch or just a practice sketch of hand with bowl and cat from 1885. You can see the cat obviously on the right hand side. He also we have Vincent Van Gogh dog from 1862. So this is just a greyhound, just a simple sketch that he would have done a line drawing. None of these animals actually appeared in his paintings. Now, Henri Matisse was a huge lover of cats. Uh, this on the left hand side is cat with goldfish. You can see on the right hand side there's interior with goldfish with the cat on the, looking up at the goldfish. Goldfish were a product of its time in Morocco where goldfish were very popular and they were a form of meditation. Looking at the, the fish swimming around in bowls was a form of relaxation and calmness. And so when Matisse returned from Morocco, he often used goldfish in many of his paintings, but these ones also have cats. Uh, interior with a dog in the middle, we see the small dog in the this very patterned room, and this was very common with Matisse. He was a very decorative, a lot of tapestries, a lot of different patterns, and really the thing that makes the dog stand out is the fact that it's got a sort of a dull color coat and it's very um, plain in comparison to everything that's going on in the background of the painting. And these are a few other Matisse images with the cats. We have his daughter Marguerite with the black cat in 1910 on the left hand side. On the right hand side we have a girl on a red couch with a cat from 1930 so we can see a little bit more abstraction here. Uh, we see the cat on the left hand side and then of course there's the cat cutout. Uh, he did cutouts from between 1940 and 1950 when he was convalescing from a, a pink pancreatic surgery that he had or digestive surgery that he had and uh, he often would take colored pieces of paper or paper that was painted a color and he would cut them out and pin them to a board to create this different kind of art called cutouts. They were very popular and very well known from Matisse's work and this is one of the cats. Suzanne Valadon was actually a model for Renoir, and I think she had a relationship with Toulouse-Lautrec. So she was involved with the Impressionists and the Post-Impressionists, uh, but she was very well known for actually nude female paintings that she did. So she was a contemporary painter as well. Uh, this one on the left-hand side is Ramanu, her cat from 1920, and these are two cats from 1918. So she often did these little paintings of her cats. She was very fond of them. But also there is paintings that she did of dogs. So not quite as detailed as her picture of Ramanu or the, or the two cats that we just saw. But uh, these are obviously the dogs that were known to her, Larbi and La Mise. And you can see that sort of painterly quality, the loose brush strokes, uh, the thick application of paint that would have been very similar to someone like Van Gogh. Now, Marie Laurentien was a contemporary of Picasso and his group of people that 
were cubists experimenting with different styles, uh, hung out in Montmartre, so early days with Picasso. However, she had her own style where she did these stylized women in pale colors in these languid poses, almost always with animals, more often dogs than cats. But here you see on the left hand side, there's one with cats in the background there. A woman with a dog and a cat from 1916 in the middle, and then a portrait of Madame Chanel, so that would be Coco Chanel in 1923. So Coco Chanel often was involved with these artists. Uh, some artists like Sonia Delaunay would do uh, fabrics for her. Now Pablo Picasso, a huge fan of dogs, but he also did a couple of portraits of cats. So this is his cat devouring a bird from 1938. Now this was just before uh, World War II happened, and this sort of is an almost an apocalyptic image of this cat that's tearing at this bird. Uh, so it sort of it could have some sort of symbolic meaning, but Picasso would never say. He never kind of gave any sort of explanation for his paintings except maybe Guernica. And this is a um, woman and a dog playing. So you can see the dog on the bottom with the woman sort of looming over the dog. They're wrestling. Uh, he had many dogs throughout his life. He would often give dogs to friends so that when he went to visit them, they, there would always be a dog around. You can see there's this other version of this uh, cat. So this is the cat catching the bird, so around the same period of time, almost like it's toying with the bird, the way the Germans were sort of toying with Europe. And this is woman with a dog from 1852. So this is his second wife, Jacqueline, the last woman who was with him uh, when he died. And this is uh, their dog, Kabul, who is an Afghan hound. Now, Marc Chagall often did these cat paintings or paintings with cats in them. Uh, he was a pioneer of modernism and he had a sort of a synthesis of styles of symbolism, phobism, cubism, and surrealism. He often did these village scenes, peasant life, intimate views of the small world, of the Jewish village, they were sort of dreamy and unreal scenery. The cats uh, not only became almost like a fantastical image in his paintings, but they were also seen to be companions of the figures in the paintings, the other poets or the musicians or the women that were in the paintings. The cat was seen as the companion for them. Uh, on the right hand side is Fables of Fontaine. It's just uh, one of the few images of dogs that are in his oeuvre, whereas cats seem to appear everywhere. So that's it for cats and dogs in this small mini class. Obviously, there are many more paintings that I haven't shown, but if you're in please go to Art History Lectures website, arthistorylectures.ca, or email me at arthistorylectures at gmail.com, or check us out on Facebook. Have a good day. Thanks, everyone.